guys, NCWQ here, and found an article this morning, Dorian snapping trees, tearing off roofs in the Bahamas. So we're going to show the Bahamas here. And this is Nassau here. And the article states, Nassau, Bahamas, as the eye wall of the strongest storm to hit the Bahamas descended on the picturesque town of Marsh Harbor, Nikivia Wallace watched in horror. The full force of Hurricane Dorian, a Category 5 storm with sustained winds of 180 miles per hour, was rolling in on Great Abaco, a northern island of the marina, of marinas, beach houses, and wood frame huts. Already, storm surge had sent waves crashing onto the street, lapping at coastal homes. As wind and rain pummeled her town, Wallace saw utility poles bend and trees snap like twigs. A pole was just about ready to hit the ground, she said on the phone, trying to keep calm so as not to alarm her two-year-old son. Then came a bang. That was my hurricane shutter, she said. It just flew into the road. Half, a half hour later, her phone went dead. As the storm's eye passed over the island, Bahama Prime Minister Hubert Menace announced parts of Marsh Harbor, a town of more than 6,000, appeared to be underwater. We're going to show where Marsh Harbor is. We're going to go over there on here. We'll show you where Marsh Harbor is. Marsh Harbor is over here. This is Marsh Harbor. And reports surfaced of desperate residents in roofless homes trying to seek shelter from rising floodwaters. The storm is, is one that we have never seen in the history of the Bahamas, Minna said, adding that the government had no confirmation of fatalities. Addressing people on the island, he said, I can only say to them that I hope that this is not the last time they will hear my voice and may God be with them. I can say that in Marsh Harbor area of Abaco, parts of it is already underwater and in some areas you cannot tell the difference as to the beginning of the street or where the ocean begins, Menace continued. And they have not been hit by the brunt of the storm. Dorian's strike on the northern Bahamas, officials and witnesses said, appeared to be a catastrophe in the making, with wind speeds accelerating just as the storm slowed. Residents of the northern Abaco Islands and Grand Bahama, including villagers who stayed put on low-lying keys, were hunkering down for a siege that could see some of the parts of this nation of nearly 400,000 people withstand hurricane conditions for two days. On the Abaco Islands, violent waves and lashing winds and rain tore apart docks and power lines and flooded roads as Dorian strengthened to Category 5 right before it struck. Images on social media showed flooding, impassable roads, phone lines went down, isolating thousands. Low-lying Marsh Harbor, the largest town in the Abacos, suffered storm surges. Officials said the Muds, a shanty town of Haitian immigrants, was severely damaged. Roofs were blown off hotels and homes. A video surfaced of one man begging for help as storm rain raged inside his home. Dorian's eye wall was on a collision course with island communities far farther west, even as the storm was slouching forward at a painfully slow seven miles per hour. The speed could reduce further, experts warned. Earlier, Dorian's arrival at the Abaco Islands had brought a sense of foreboding. Right now, you have those Rain bands coming in off and on, <coughs> said Leslie McIntosh, 50, of the Bahamas Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources in Foxtown on Little Abaco Island. The wind has picked up, and that tells me now that everything is headed downhill, which means it's getting closer to Grand Abaco. So let's see where Grand Abaco is. Grand Abaco. Grand Abaco is here, so this is Grand Abaco, same island. In some parts of the Abacos, residents reported electricity outages as early as 1.30 a.m. Targeted elevations have been ordered, with authorities and local volunteers aiding with transit by sea and land. More than 50 residents of Grand Key were trapped for more than seven hours overnight as they attempted to leave the area. They finally escaped by boat. A vessel departed at 5.30 a.m. from Grand Key with 58 persons on board en route to Grand Bahama, said Captain Stephen Russell, 
director of the National Emergency Management Agency. There may be a few more, but that's the most the boat can take now under the circumstances, and that may very well be the last trip there. Maxine Duncom, administrator of Central Abaco, said more than 500 people lived on Keys off the district and that most had remained despite evacuation orders. I would say at least 90% of the persons stayed on the Keys, she said. They did not avail themselves of the transportation that was provided for them to be evacuated. Areas of the northern Bahamas could spend an, ex spend an extended period within Dorian's eyewall, the National Hurricane Center said, subjecting them to extended bouts of punishing winds, rain totals above 24 inches, and storm surge 10 to 15 feet above normal. Airports were closed on, Gra on Abaco Island and on Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama is home to Freeport, the nation's second largest city, which stood right in the path of the storm. Concern increasingly centered on Freeport, where desperate lines to stock up food and gas had run late Saturday. By early afternoon Sunday, conditions there were described as, an, as eerily calm, according to one resident. There are not a lot of people around, said Sarah Kirby, a 50-year-old public relations executive. All the stores look like they are closed except one. The weather is really okay here. It just looks like a regular rainy day but we all know that a big storm is coming. Schools and government offices were ordered closed. Officials were predicting that 73,000 residents and 23,000 homes could be affected by the storm. They were encouraging residents to gather at nine hurricane shelters on Grand Bahama and 15 shelters on the Abacos. For many on Grand Bahama, Dorian is a reminder of the bitter history of dangerous storms, particularly the back-to-back -back Francis and Jean, which left a ruinous trail in 2004. The Bahamas is still struggling to overcome the devastating effects of three recent hurricanes. In 2015, Hurricane Joaquin, a Category 4 storm, ravaged the southern islands, including Long Island. In 2016, Hurricane Matthew, an equally strong storm, tore through the Grand Bahamas, severely damaging 95% of the buildings in Eight Mile Rock and Holmes Rock. In 2016, Hurricane Irma, a Category 5 storm, virtually leveled Ragged Island, leaving it uninhabitable nearly two years after the storm. Anyways, you guys, this is where the storm, this, this hurricane is at right here. And as of this, this time, this is what this storm is supposed, this hurricane storm is supposed to be doing. Um, right now, it's got winds of 100, let me see what it says. Um, me back up one and tell you what the winds are right now so I don't get this wrong. The winds right now, and there's also a tropical storm, the winds right now are sustained 185 miles per hour as of four o'clock, which is half an hour ago. And let's see what the new new path is. It's still the same. Anyways, you guys, I hope y'all are doing well. Hope y'all are having a great day or night wherever you are in the world. Um, if you're in the eye of this hurricane, please be safe. Please listen to your officials and please follow directions to evacuate if you have been asked to evacuate. Um, this is going to cause a lot of flooding in this area. Anyways, you guys have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. Much love.